Yeah. So, and then this last video, this last part of the Afterthought series, I've got the Afterthought video in three, which will be made after recording the Buckle Bell area. Prima. So this part will be uh, some sound aspects of the fretted clavichord here, the Christopher Clark 1978 fretted clavichord. So this, this will be the last part of three. All videos will be linked. If you see this video first, there will be a link here that guides you or that leads you to the second video. And then the second video will be a link that leads you to the first video. And at the end of the videos, they will be linked with the annotation cards of YouTube. There might be a fourth video to come on technical aspects that went wrong during this uh, the recording of the afterthoughts you cannot imagine and I don't know which see anyway I hope you enjoy this short video on the fretted clavichord some sound aspects and we see each other very soon again bye I will put this camera down and show you some uh, I'll let you hear some sounds apart from the effect that we of course have made the remote recording but what's typical on these instruments is that in the, in the in the treble and you know the position of the microphones is rather close I, I hadn't uh, another option because if I would go further with the microphones I would record also more of the environmental sounds which is which would of course not be acceptable I uh, therefore the the sound you hear on YouTube for the, both of the recordings is rather close but gives you actually an accurate uh, um, impression of the instrument uh, how it sounds when you really are close to the instrument like I am now so it's it's uh, we will make a video on uh, sound recording and the influence of the microphones and certainly the influence of the placement positioning of the microphones that's that's something we really have to do because too many times I hear remarks and I read comments in, uh, on, on internet judging sound uh, first to YouTube which is actually not possible uh, it's compressed sound it's not bad but it's not very good either and secondly uh, without knowing the instrument in reality in real life it's actually it's it's really impossible to give an accurate uh, uh, picture actually sound picture of the instrument even not of a hi-fi installation of 100,000 euro if that would be an accessible option for you then even then it is an interpretation of the reality microphones they don't have a brain and we will talk about that in one of the next q and a's will be a very fun video to make so i've placed these microphones rather close so again to exclude the environmental sounds that by times you have airplanes that's impossible and we had to quit uh, recording when they flew one of the reasons for the studio became very clear while, while recording here. The studio should be, if we once would be able to build it, should be um, air uh, soundproof or really for that kind of noise to exclude that so then we can have a recording facility 24 hours a day. Of course, not in an environment like this. So that's one reason. But second reason is by close, uh, putting the microphones close so you really have more details of the sound, of the actual sound, and what done when I would have put them uh, somewhat further. So, what's really nice on this instrument is the somehow sweet attack in the treble. Uh, it's really direct. And the microphones enhance that effect a little bit. But even in real reality, you hear this, uh, this, this kind of very, um, should I say in English, very particular attack that you kind of, it's different on my big lab record and it's different on, on 
in general on unfretted clavichords where you have a different kind of attack. What's very important at the same time, and this instrument is doing a great job, is that the soundboard is there is a tension in the soundboard, and we'll talk about it on, on also on my instrument. There is a lot of confusion on should the clavichord sound loud, loud or not, and things like that. But the soundboard, in my opinion, should really uh, enhance everything that's happening in the instrument. And one of the things that, that I think you can test the capacity of the soundboard is in the treble. When you have a normal sound, that's a decent sound. But if you uh, execute a little bit more pressure on that, so make it a fortissimo sound, listen what the soundboard does. Now, of course, here the pitch is changing a lot because the string is also so short. And that's really an exaggerating, but having this flexibility in sound really means that you can paint as to so to say with the sound on this instrument and that's really critical it's to me actually to me uh, at least yeah. this g is coming on top of everything So that's very important and this instrument does an excellent job. In the bass, that's somewhat different because the strings are so short that it's a little bit out of tune now, but even then it's difficult to tune the D. Also to make the damping. So the bass, of course, the bigger instruments they gain, and there are also fretted clavichords that that are somewhat bigger, and so it's, it has, has all to do with size and with scaling of the strings, but and, and and being so small, transportable, in one way or another, there are compromised masses that that need to be made. So for almost 40 year old instruments, it's a wonderful instrument to play on. Um, there is a lot, a lot, a lot that I could share with you of my ideas that I developed, just my impressions actually that I developed while playing on this instrument. It's only temporarily in my house, in my possession, so to say. Uh, maybe we do some videos on that, also to compare the this instrument with my instrument. That's the only thing I can do. I will not generalize in the sense that I would say fretted instruments in general and unfretted instruments in general because I have not the experience on playing on so many instruments. Hopefully one day I will have, but at, as, as we speak um, I can uh, share some ideas on this instrument and on my instruments and how these, these two compare. So to close this aftertones the next one will go on swelling and on the echo fantasia. There's a lot of fun things to say about that. Just to close here is one thing uh, would, and I got a question from a few people just to answer on that. Would I dive into the world of the unfretted clav on the fretted clavichords? Um, possibly not. And the reason for that is there is so much literature to be played on my unfretted clavichord from Bach to Mozart and young Beethoven actually. Then the pianoforte is coming. Um, it's a matter of time and my heart on this moment is more bit this 18th century, early 18th and mid and late 18th century uh, literature than, than, than on this period. So um, how fascinating I find playing on this, it feels to me more rewarding playing on the big life record as I have. Partly because of the literature, partly also, I must admit, because that instrument gives me uh, no limitation, actually also no feeling of limitation, whereas on this instrument, even playing swelling, and certainly playing swelling, we go into that in the swelling afterthoughts, um, things that I have to keep in mind 
and it's not about the threats, but I talk about it in the in the uh, swilling cough. So, so that's just a personal stand, and who knows that will change once. Um, as we said in the beginning, our local village Hechtel Axel they merged together in 1972. So you know my know my age. I hope to uh, be able to live some years and maybe things change and new opportunities come. That's how I think on that, on the moment. Again, I thank the, uh, the city or village of Hechtel Axel for giving access to this beautiful place. The patrons I have for making this possible and Patrick Colomb for lending me this instrument and Christopher Clark for making it. We should not forget that we musicians depend fully on the instrument builders. So thank you all for that. Thank you all for watching, for subscribing and sharing this video. I hope it was in, uh, gave some information to you and we see each other very soon again from the same location. Bye.